Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we're having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Jewel Direct, which is being made by forum user Delkir, and what this glorious little piece of work is looking to add into the game is a selection of 3.75 and 5 meter parts to help you build those heavy lifting rockets. And what makes this even better is that it's actually based off of some real world designs in the form of the NASA Direct Program. Program and the Jupiter rocket family. Of course, these have been kerbalized for our in-game enjoyment, so let's just jump right on into the VAB and have a look at all what all this pack does bring into the game. Now, remember, very large parts, so let's for size comparison sake grab the Mark 1-2, which of course is 2.5 meters, and then head to a custom category that I built because, well, all these parts are scattered around through all of these, and unfortunately, if we actually go just take a quick look at one of them, the manufacturer isn't a custom manufacturer, it's actually Kerbodyne, so I can't sadly use the manufacturers tab to split out this particular mod so for convenience sake i've gone ahead and made this jewel direct tab and let's just start from the top and work our way down so the first is an engine mount i'm gonna go ahead and call it the x8 because i'm frankly not quite sure if that's supposed to be an LLL or an III thanks to the font in this game but yes a lovely X8 engine mount which is of the 5 meter size variety and as you probably saw down at the bottom has a lot of lovely attachment points for engines in fact I found it uh, very useful as an engine mount if we actually go uh, to put nice little 1.25s around the outside and then a nice big 2.5 meter engine on the inside and you got plenty of room for a lot of engines here to give you a lot of thrust and a lot of control so definitely quite a nice piece now it is also a decoupler as you can see here which if we go back to our tab has an ejection force of 150 uh, no fuel or anything like that but uh, as a note by default fuel crossfeed is off, which I find odd considering this is an engine mount. If you don't turn crossfeed on, the fuel doesn't get to your engine, so I don't understand why that's not on by default, uh, but just keep that in mind whenever you build with these on your own. Now the next part is in fact one of three parts in sequence. We're going to have a look here first at the direct payload base, which if we pop on the top of our uh, little command pod there, is a 3.75 meter part, and this is designed as a base and decoupler with 100 ejection force to specifically hold the direct payload container which goes right in the center there and this thing can hold a variety of different things it does use a fire spitter so that it will allow different types of tank setups from liquid oxidizer and liquid fuel to liquid fuel monopropellant and huh surprisingly not just oxidizer. You only have liquid fuel and oxidizer here. Uh, but yes, you have a couple of different tank setups for your use. And then the third part in order for these is the payload cover. So it's a nice little fairing that goes along the outside, as you can see there, just attaches on and protects your payload from, uh, you know, debris, etc. It's, it's quite good. You can fit really two of these in here quite nice and then have another additional section on top if you so desire. It works out quite well and it's a nice little payload system, frankly. But let's chuck that baby off and then look at our next part, which is another engine mount. Now this one is uh, for the 3.75 meter engines, or uh, fuel tanks rather, and it has four nice little attachment points on the bottom for, well, four different engines. Now this one, unlike the other engine mount, does have liquid fuel and oxidizer. It carries a 1620 liquid fuel and 1980 oxidizer. Overall, a nice little engine mount, good attachment points, uh, quite a good look to it actually. I, I much prefer the look of this one compared to the last. I think just because it has a it's a bit more stylistic rather than just a cylinder, frankly. Uh, but yes, that is the engine mount. We then have a direct thruster plate. Now this one is in the 3.75 meter category and, well, it's a plate designed for you to put thrusters on. That's it. And uh, as you can see on the description here, it's designed for 1.25 meter engines. And we have a number of attachment points there, as you can see. And uh, yeah, that's that's really what that plate's for. It's 
an engine mount. Uh, we then have yet another engine thrust plate, which of course is in the five meter variety. And this one uh, still having the same description for 1.25 meters, but being larger, you could easily fit 2.5 meter engines onto here and be just happy. Now it's basically the exact same attachment points that we did see on this engine mount up here, just on a flat thruster plate rather than a much larger mounting with a decoupler. Uh, these do not have decouplers, so they are basically just inline structural elements uh, that you can put engines onto. And that is that. Now the next part is again a three-parter. We have the S328800 orange tank, which actually let's pop this thing here so we can kind of pop this on the side. There we go. And this, oh god, we have to zoom out more. And excellent, is just a giant, giant orange tank. As you can see here, it holds a heck of a lot of liquid fuel and oxidizer in 12,960 liquid fuel and 15,840 oxidizer. And then on top of this thing, you can put the orange nose cone, which, oh boy, okay, okay, hold on, hold on, alt, there we are, excellent. And the nose cone holds an additional 810 liquid fuel and 990 oxidizer. A dozen have any aerodynamics to it so not useful for that but it does make it look quite nice and uh, well adds more fuel and then of course we have a bottom tank part which adds 720 liquid fuel and 880 oxidizer and that just goes on the bottom there so you have a nice rounded very very large orange tank and that's really all there is to that. It is in the 3.75 meter size, so that is good to note there. And let's now chuck all of these off and then take a look at another sequence of three, starting with the S4 6.4K Jewel 3 tank, which is a five meter tank, and it's the small five meter tank. That's a very large tank to be considered small, but yes, there we are. Let's zoom in a bit. Again, pretty basic on the modeling and texturing, but overall still does look good enough and close to stock alike, so I enjoy it. And this particular one holds 2880 liquid fuel, 30, uh, 3520 oxidizer. We then have the larger medium model, which is basically two of those stacked on top of one another with a slightly different texture and holds uh, <laughs> 5,760 liquid fuel, 7,040 oxidizer. And then finally we have the large tank, which is basically three of the small stacked on top of one another and holds 11,520 liquid fuel, 14,080 oxidizer, and is just a very, very, very large thing. Again, five meters in size and very, very heavy, holding a lot of fuel. Good times indeed. Now the next part we have here is the Rocco Max MSAM4 fuel tank, which is made for landers. Oh god, I didn't hold alt. Hold on. There we go. Excellent. And it's just a lovely little fuel tank and uh, nice little attachment points so that you can put, or not attachment points, but nice flat surfaces for putting lander legs on. And as you can see on the bottom, we have two separate little attachment points there. Now, if you just want to use this one on its own, that top attachment point is what you'd want to put in engine onto, the other attachment point is designed to go with its brother right here, but let's uh, stick with this one first. So this smaller MSAM4 does hold liquid fuel, oxidizer, and monopellant, and uh, the liquid fuel at 180, oxidizer at 220, and monopropellant at 100. So just a nice little small fuel tank for your landers, but if you need a bit more, you have the MSDM16, which is designed to attach through that attachment point right there. As you can see through the slightly see-through bit there, I have an attachment point in the center of this thing, and I just pop it on like so, and there we are. We have a much larger sort of lander fuel setup now. Now this does have its own built-in decoupler, uh, which will decouple this bottom section from the top section, so it's quite nice. So you can still have a small engine hidden inside this compartment here, then pop on this, 
and oh god if it would attach there we go and then have another engine inside here oh god let's uh, zoom in there we go we have another attachment point for an engine there and then of course a final attachment point to uh, attach it to any base you so desire and it's just a nice little thing there very good to have all that addi additional fuel now this one doesn't hold mono propellant but it does hold liquid fuel at 720 oxidizer at 880 and also 200 electric charge along with that uh, decoupler i mentioned and again crossfeed is disabled so well, actually, that's probably a good one for this, because you don't want to use up the fuel from this section until the very, very last stage of engines that you have. So that one, at least I can understand. The engine mount, on the other hand, eh, still don't understand that one being defaulted to off. But now, finally, for the last part, let us zoom back out and go to the SRB KD5DK, the Backfire Solid Fuel Booster. And it's a biggin'. It's a big big booster look at that baby now its maximum thrust is a 1200 kilonewtons and will burn through a five or 54.9 of its solid fuel per second and it holds inside of it 3600 solid fuel so it's actually going to burn for quite a substantial amount of time and for a good size comparison if we look at the kickback which is of course the largest of our versions currently in the game you can see the different size to them but of course keeping with the same style Styling. It's essentially the same engine, but just with an extra one of these stacks attached to the top, which, you know what, works for me. It's quite a good, good solid rocket booster that'll give you some good power and, again, longevity with how slowly it burns compared to some of the other boosters. Now, let's actually take a look at a really quickly thrown together kind of crappy rocket that I built earlier that I honestly have no idea if it's even going to fly, but I put this together with uh, the 5 meter fuel tank in mind we've got that lovely little um, engine mount down here with all the the uh, 1.25 meter and 2.5 meter engines as I did recommend for it and then of course six of the nice solid rocket boosters and then a nice lander up in the top section here which hopefully works now also hopefully I've remembered to stage everything correctly let's find out and just take it for a quick little ride now this is just an idea of one of these sorts of ships you could build with all of these parts but with a whole selection of 3.75 and 5 meter parts really the sky is the limit oh quite possibly literally with some of these with how big they are but, I mean just look at how massive this thing is and then imagine I actually tried building this thing with uh, some of those large orange tanks off the side for more fuel but I figured I'd never get off the ground I, I think this should get off the ground so let's just try it out <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have SAS on, and we will launch in three, two, and one. Oh, that's slow, but it is rising up, which is a good thing. Okay, okay, we're moving. We are actually moving. I'm a little surprised. <laughs> I honestly didn't know if it would work. I literally threw this thing together in about five minutes before the episode thinking, ah, it'll look okay and it'll give some people some ideas for something that they might potentially be able to do for themselves down the road. And yeah, well, this is Jewel Direct. This is the sort of thing you can build with it, though you guys could probably build a much more interesting and most likely much larger and stable craft than I could. And if you guys do check this mod out through the link in the description, as always, I would love to see the images of the sorts of ships you guys build with it, because frankly, with how large these parts are, I can only I can only dream of what some of you guys may come up with. Oh, uh, it's just it's a pretty cool little mod. I'm I've been quite enjoying it, and it's always nice to have more large parts for heavy lifting rockets. I I should probably turn on my next engine stage. The engines, oh god, did I not turn on the crossfeed? I did not enable. There we go. <laughs> See what I mean? Why is that not defaulted to on? <laughs> All right, there go the SRBs. Excellent, and wow, that actually worked very well. Six of those SRBs got us past the 10 kilometer mark. That's, uh,. That's impressive. This thing could easily get into orbit, though, frankly, it's never going to make it there because, well, 
Eh, I'm going to end the episode here in a, about a second. So yes, if you would like to check out this mod for yourself, and I definitely suggest you should, go and take a look at the link in the description as always. And I do, of course, also hope that you have enjoyed this episode and that you do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always, I'm going to doom this ship to disaster. And of course, have a good one. <laughs> Later, folks.